This is one of the first fully 3D compliant mechanisms. It can hold a single point fixed in space. But chickens have been doing this naturally with their heads all along. So I wanted to see how this mechanism works and how do chickens pull this off as well. Can I find a situation where that ability actually fails? Oh no! <laughs> okay, you can stop. <laughs> Hey chickies, time for science. Virtually all birds have this ability to stabilize their heads even when their body's moving or rotating. This is Bella. Notice how she can keep her head locked in place during translational movement, meaning from side to side or up and down, and also during rotational movement. This is crazy. The reason that birds have this ability is because in order to track prey, they need to fix their eyes on exactly where their next meal is going to be and know when to strike. But mammals need to do this as well. But instead of fixing their whole head on the prey, they just keep their eyes locked in on the target. Watch what a good hunter I am. See how I can keep my eyes on the camera even when my head's moving? <laughs> Chickens can't do this because their eyes are basically locked in their head compared to mammals. So when their body moves, instead of moving their eyes to stay locked on a target, they have to keep their whole head locked on a target. Notice how the chicken's head becomes basically the center of rotation of the whole body when I turn it. It's almost like the head is pinned in place. In mechanical engineering, we would refer to the chicken's head as a remote center of rotation, RCR. It's possible to make a remote center of rotation without any biofeedback as well. For example, in a previous video, I showed you how to use a few rigid rods connected through pins to make a two-dimensional floating center of rotation. This could even be applied to a whole compliant mechanism like this elephant's trunk here. See how the whole body moves around the center of the trunk? But can this be done in three dimensions as well? Well, yes, actually. I recently discovered this research paper where engineers were able to design a 3D mechanism that holds one point fixed in place. And the coolest part is that it's all a compliant mechanism that can be 3D printed in one piece. I'm using my Creality K2 Pro printer to make this. I'll tell you more about it later in the video. So there are no moving parts in this, only bending. Look at the center of this pointer here. No matter what movement I do, it stays in the exact same spot. It feels like there's some imaginary anchor holding it in place. But I think the weirdest part about this, and you might have to print it yourself to actually see it, but I'll do my best to show it to you. The weirdest part is because the tip of the pointer always stays fixed no matter how you move it, this also means that if I push on the pointer, it can't move. So you'd expect this to be pretty flimsy hanging out here, but it's solid. It's completely restrained against any movement. Like I have it up against a wall or something. It seems like I should just be able to bend it like the other side, but this side isn't bendable at all. This device works because these triangle shapes all point so that they line up with the tip of the rod. So that means that in any direction, if that tip were to move, it would have to bend these triangles. But that shape is very stable, so you can't move the tip of the pointer no matter how hard you push on it. But the chickens don't work through a mechanical method like this. They do something much more complex. But how do they do it? Well, there are three main ways that chickens know how to keep their heads still. We also use these as well, but just not to the same extent as chickens. First, they rely on visual cues from around the room. If the motion-sensitive neurons in the brain detect motion coming from the optic nerve, then the chicken's muscles compensate for that motion by pushing back in the opposite direction, keeping the head still. In addition to this, they also use their vestibular system. It's a small semicircular canal filled with fluid that can detect angular acceleration, along with otolith organs, which are small crystals that tug on hairs when the head is moved due to the crystal's inertia. Finally, they use proprioception, which are nerves throughout the whole body that tell where each part of the body is in relation to the other parts. But which of these three systems is used for what? Well, first I'm going to test how much the ocular system has to do with the head stabilization. So let's turn out all the lights and see if Bella can stabilize her head in the dark. Okay, this is really interesting. In the dark, the chicken couldn't stabilize any translational movement. But when I tried rotational movement, she had no problem. She kept her head perfectly still. 
So in the dark, even though the chicken still had its otolith organs working fine, without visual cues it couldn't stabilize translational movement. So otolith input alone is ambiguous. It can't cleanly separate tilt versus linear movement, whereas rotation isn't ambiguous even in the dark. So in the dark, she was able to keep her rotational stabilization, but let's see what happens if we try to confuse that system. So I'm going to be holding the chicken in the back of a van while my brother drives around in tight circles to give a lot of angular acceleration. Okay, Bella. Oh no. <laughs> okay, so let's do a, just a rotational test right now. So oh, she can do it. Right. <laughs> Still has no problem doing the, doing the rotation. Is it side to side? Definitely can't do side to side. Up and down, nope. But yeah, this one, the rotational one, she's locked in even when we're spinning around like crazy. This is interesting. In the dark, we were able to reduce her ability to stabilize translational movement. That's understandable because she had no visual cues. But in the van, even with visual cues, with the inside of the van, she couldn't do translational stabilization. In the van, the little crystals in the air could have gotten pinned in one direction due to the acceleration, so they can't tell translational movement very well, even though the eyes are telling it that it's moving. As for the rotational stabilization, this seems much more stable. Nothing really messed it up. That's because this system relies on the vestibular system of semicircular canals filled with liquid. Even though the van was spinning, it just cared about any change to the acceleration, not background acceleration. This actually lines up with a paper I found where they tested this on pigeons. They found the same thing that I just found. In the dark, the pigeons couldn't stabilize translational movements, but they could always stabilize rotational movements whether it was dark or not. This is so cool how chickens automatically do this type of correction. I love the mechanical stabilizer that I 3D printed as well. I'll leave a link to the STL file for this in the description. Let me show you how I printed it. This is the Creality K2 Pro. It's perfect for doing prints like this and really anything else you want to make. The Creality K2 is Creality's new flagship compact 3D printer with a 260 by 260 by 260 millimeter build volume. It has true plug and play convenience thanks to its pre-assembled design. I literally had it printing within minutes of getting it out of the box. You can get the CFS system that lets it automatically change up to four colors at a time, giving you true multicolor printing. You can even get up to 16 color printing by connecting four CFS units together. It has an aerospace grade aluminum frame, dual Z axis with linear rods, and precision steel X axis rails to ensure excellent stability and print quality. It also has advanced FOC step servo motors that are super quiet while it prints up to 600 millimeters per second. This keeps it no louder than typing on a laptop. It also comes with smart auto leveling, a flexible PEI build plate, and an AI camera that not only detects print failures, but also checks the build plate and can create time lapses. With a maximum nozzle temperature of 300 degrees Celsius, it can handle PLA, PETG, ABS, PPA, or anything else you want to use. This is a PPA bracket that I just printed. I also made some really strong ABS vice grips. I even printed these ASA parts that I designed to work outdoors. So if you want to check it out, you can click the link in my description. And thanks again to Creality for sponsoring this video, and we'll see you next time.